is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, welcome to the Chris Abraham Show, nay, Chris Cast. This is season four, episode seven, and I'm surrounded by noise, but hopefully not wind noise, because I bought my uh, Olympus WS853, I bought it a dead cat, which is a what's called a wind muff or something, and honestly, this is a really good one, and it looks like there's legit animal hair on it, so do not order this if you are a vegan. I think it might be actual hair. Today's episode is going to be not what I expected, but I was listening to the WAMU 88.5 DC radio show, uh, WAMU 88.5 FM, and they have a show that replaced Diane Reem, or was it Kojo Namdi? And it's called 1A, and it talks about issues of the day, and it's really good, and sometimes infuriating, sometimes awesome, sometimes local, sometimes national, sometimes international. Always an interesting guest. Generally two, it's over two hours, so generally two topics, and I love it very much. But today's was about how many people die on the streets. And I'm not talking about gang bangers and drive-bys and muggings and shootings or mass shootings or uh, warlords fighting out for territory and turf. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first breathing breath to your last dying day. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, street crime, but it's called road violence or car violence or street violence or vehicle violence now and it has to do with the fact that uh, everybody's dying in the streets uh, people who are crossing them people who are uh, bicycling on them people who are motorcycling on them and people who are driving on them uh, anything paved will kill you and here's my <coughs> TLDR uh, you can almost guarantee that the life of a Karen will be shortened because they'll be defiant about having the right of way and they'll be crushed like a bug. So that's primarily the way Karens die. Karens also die through uh, being beat to death um, because words are violence and words can get you canceled, but they can also get you pummeled to death. So after this break, we'll be back and I will read you something I wrote I dare say, when was it? I wrote it for the Huffington Post on December 14th, 2016 at around 2.30 p.m. So, let's see if it's still on the Huffington Post. Here we are. The uh, It's on uh, Huffington Post, I'll share it. <clears throat> it's called Tips to Survive City Riding on Bike Share. If you're, such an, if you're in an urban environment and have taken to the streets on a pedal bike, be it through bike, a bike share scheme or on your own bike, you're going to get yourself killed unless you pay close attention to my 35, my 35 years of riding in cities on the street. And of course, we need to add um, electrical scooters and electrical bikes to this as well. Um, and also those um, unicycle, motor unicycles, and all the other weird 
things that people, that hipsters at uh, tech companies are using to get from hither to thither. You're all going to die, not from, not from, um, uh, not from climate change or a civil war or um, an attack by Putin or Islam on American soil, <clears throat> but you're going to get, you're going to die on the streets. You know, and I'll include on that uh, getting shot by a gang banger or a gang member to that. Anyway, uh, Defiance Kills. I'll be right back to you. Welcome back to Season 4, Episode 7 of... The Chris Abraham Show. I'm Chris Abraham, and I will read you now what I wrote for the uh, Huffington Post. I used to be a contributor. Actually, on August 1, 2013, uh, 11.06 a.m., I apologize. It was said it was updated December 6, 2017, but it originally posted on 2013. Huffington Post. Tips to survive city riding on bike share. If you're in an urban environment and have taken the streets on a pedal bike, be it through a bike share scheme or on your own bike, you're going to get yourself killed unless you pay close attention to my 35 years of riding in cities and on the streets by Chris Abraham, contributor. Uh, this post was published on the now closed Huffington Contributor platform. Contributors uh, control their own work and post freely to our site. If you need to flag this entry as abusive, send us an email. Alright, if you're in an urban environment and have taken to the streets on a pedal bike, be it through a bike share scheme or on your own bike, you're going to get yourself killed unless you benefit from my decades as a devoted city rider. My bona fides, my bona fides, my bona fides include a couple of years as a bike messenger in Washington, D.C., in addition to the 25 years I've been riding the streets of Washington, Portland, and Berlin, all without a helmet or any lycra whatsoever. So, which is not true. When I was a bike courier, I wore lycra shorts and uh, cotton t-shirts. So, be it on your own bike or one of the rentals such as Capital Bike Shares here in the D.C. area or City Bike in New York, please let me share with you what I know that has kept me alive for over a quarter century. Number one, a helmet doesn't protect you until you crash. It is true, helmets do save lives. On the other hand, if you need your helmet, you've hit something and crashed. Crashing doesn't have to be vehicle versus vehicle, but often is. And no matter how right you are, or just, in your riding, lane choice, line and speed, you're pretty much just skin and bones, tendons, plastic, wire, rubber, steel, vinyl, leather, and aluminium. Aluminum. You're easier to crunch than a soda can. Avoid, avoid crashing, avoiding crashing is very important because you're probably not armored up like a motorcyclist and your helmet, if you wear one, is made of styrofoam. Let's work on both riding well and also avoiding situations that'll get you stuck in a very mortal situation. And although we like to blame taxis, buses, cars, and stupid pedestrians, if you think the city street is as scary, dangerous, unpredictable, and aggressive, and aggressive, the lowest common denominator is you. You might be reckless, you might be careless, you might assume you have right of way, deserve space and respect on the street, or even considered um, at all when there are coffees, radio, phone calls, Siri, passengers, traffic frustrations, ignit ignit indignant rage and bike hating going on potentially in every single car, bus, cab, truck, and motorcycle on the road. All of which means you're not likely holding any cards at all. Yes, if that BMW driver mows you down, that driver will go to jail. However, you'll be dead, so you won't be able to gloat from your mortal, uh, gloat from your mortal coil. Maybe down from heaven or up from hell. Number two, keep your indignant rage in check. You're going to be cut off. People are going to share your lane. People will carelessly merge into you. The bike lane will cut, will be cut off. Other bikers will hurt your reputation by jumping lights, 
by riding ContraFlow, and there are always bike messages out there to hurt your pristine bike road rule following of laws. You'll be fine as long as you let it go. If you play indignant chicken, I will stay right here. This is where I'm legally entitled to ride. You're going to eventually get squished. On the street, you need to be grateful every moment that you're still moving forward unmolested and spend more of your time and attention reinforcing good drivers by smiling, waving, and saying thank you to them as well as the pedestrians who, as well as the pedestrians as well, huh, who clear the way for you and enable you to flow as opposed to squealing to a halt. Number, is it three? Assume drivers can't or don't see you. They can't and they don't. In Berlin and most of Europe, not only are there separate roads for city cyclists, there are bike stop lights, bike turn signals, and especially bike awareness. Someday, enough drivers will know enough drivers who are in prison for running over a commuting cyclist. Then people will look for cyclists too. If it makes you feel any better, drivers don't or can't see motorcyclists either. And riders have lights, blinkers, and loud pipes. If cars don't know how to see a motorcyclist on the road, they surely won't notice a 155 pound person on a 30 pound bike, even if it is red or blue or yellow, even if it has LED lights, and even if you wear high vis and use the, the bell liberally. Uh, my BMW motorcycle is a sound cocoon on its own with NPR on. I can't hear, oh, sorry, my, five th my BMW 530i uh, is a sound cocoon on its own. With NPR on, I can't hear anything outside of my vehicle. Sometimes not even emergency vehicles like ambulances, police cruisers, and fire trucks. DC is a rich city. Everyone has an amazing stereo and sound sealed fine automobile to say nothing of the white noise hiss of climate control. Number four, is it? Five? Assume every taxi intends to kill you. We'll include Uber in that now. They move slowly, they never signal, and they are happy to turn left from the right lane, right from the left lane, and if they see a fare, they'll do a U-turn in the middle of the road, or just about anything else, to get it. Number five or six, running during rush hour, assume everyone is channeling the Hulk. Hulk. Everyone's late for work or for home. If you're commuting to work on your bike, you're riding during the worst time of the day twice. Number six or number seven, after 4 p.m., assume all drivers, pedestrians, and riders are drunk. In fact, always assume everyone's drunk, really drunk. It helps with vigilance. There's a lot of drunks in the city. Number seven, eight, or nine. Picture every pedestrian as a deer in the headlights. I like to use my honed-in bike carrier mind to anticipate the vector and acceleration of everyone around me on the street. <clears throat> From pedestrians to other bikes to vehicular traffic, Pedestrians are unpredictable. They tend to freeze like a deer in the headlights or double back or change their state of acceleration. Cars, taxi, bikes, and buses have enough mass and momentum that one can easily make assumptions. Buses are slow to start, taxis dart, and cars don't blink. Sadly, it's getting worse. When I was a courier in the late 80s and early 90s, there were very few distractions. Really only Walkman and big Nokia cell phones. I meant to say big... Uh, Ericsson, big uh, American brand. Anyway, some people would read while walking. Uh, now, however, your garden variety ped is using his or her attention span to do everything outside navigating, allowing their autonomic autopilot to convey them home. They're plugged into music with in-ear sound isolating buds or are so invested in conversation that they're far off in a much different brainscape. The cloud and aren't even paying attention to city buses, potholes, or even street light poles. You need to anticipate outcome, and if you've studied any quantum physics at all, consider all the possible outcomes about to spawn into new multiverse forks, and be ready to cover your brakes, be ready to panic, stop, stop or swerve, and balance your body to the, uh, to the rear to help keep upright as you come to a halt. Number eight or nine, maybe? Assume every driver is both texting and daydreaming. I still can't believe how many drivers actually turn their heads to speak to their passengers. It's not just TV. I don't know if sound works that way. We don't communicate like directional shotgun mics. 
And don't forget, cities with bike share programs are tourist meccas. Not only are people listening to Pandora, checking Siri, being guided by GPS, and having intimate eye contact conversations with their passengers. They're also sightseeing, hungrily devouring monuments, points of interest, skyscrapers, museums, and statues, too. Uh, number nine or ten, assume every parked car has a driver in it. I had two crashes when I was a bike carrier. One was a washout in gravel where I ignored the laws of physics during a bunny hop. I tried to do a 90 degree turn uh, in the air that only works on Tron. And the other was getting my front wheel pretzel from getting doored. Doored refers to running into an open car door uh, on a parallel, uh, on a parallel par of a parallel parked car. In addition to dealing with being doored, people suddenly pull out, people walk into traffic and run to fill up their parking meter. People actually hang out in their cars too. Look into the car, look at the mirrors, look for lights, brake, head, cabin. Check the angle of the car and also notice the front tires. Are they angled as if to pull out? Sometimes drivers park like that. However, wheels angled out as if ready to pull into traffic are a very good indicator as to intent. Because, you know, drivers are told when they park to angle their front tires towards the curb. If you don't remember from driver's school. 9, 10, or 11, I guess. Follow the laws of physics. Know your bike. What can it do? How well can you stop your brakeless fixie? How quickly can you come to a full stop at speed? How quickly can you get out of those clipless pedals? Can you reach the ground with your foot? How aggressively can you turn? 90 degree turns work only on Tron. And can you accelerate as fast as you think? Number 9, 10, or 11. Turn your head. Don't make any assumptions. When you ride in the city, always check your lane, check your merge, check your angle of attack, and your follow through a turn. Turn your head, look all the way, check, make sure you buy a helmet that doesn't in any way obstruct your field of vision or peripheral vision. And this is an editorial note, real time. Keep your head on a swivel and make sure you cover your six. Uh, 10, 11, or 12, something like that. Anyway, have an escape strategy. They teach you this in motorcycling. The same thing is true when you're driving a car and especially on a motorcycle. Don't get stuck and always have a plan B, C, or D and an exit strategy. Semis and buses take a lot of room turning or pulling up to a curb. How many times have I needed to bunny hop onto the sidewalk to avoid getting cut off by a big vehicle with zero visibility, even if I had the right of way? Now I make sure I leave room and anticipate worst case scenarios. Always leave room for a swerve or an exit or for braking quickly. Uh, 10, 11, 12, or 13, I don't know. Always cover the brakes. If you ride a bike with drop bars, you need to get bar top brakes levers too. They can work in unison with your drop levers. I have drop bars, but I only have brakes on the top because when I'm in a situation that requires the sort of agility being up and tall and on the tops of the bars that on being on top of the bars requires, I also need the brakes. If I need to be on the drop for speed or climbing leverage, I'm either in the clear or grinding slow. Uh, 10, 11, or 12 maybe. Sit up your turns and follow through. Don't turn blind. Sit up your turn. Look through your line all the way through and then pick your new line. Try to be three steps ahead. 12, 13, maybe 14, I don't know. Keep your eyes up. Don't look down. Keep your eyes up looking ahead, left, right, and turn your head. Keep your eyes off your computer or phone. People walk into traffic from between cars all the time. They tell you the same thing when you learn to ride motorcycles and when you learn to waltz. Look up, keep your eyes up, don't look at your feet or the bike or the road right ahead of you. Notice those potholes well before you need to get off the seat and brace for impact. Or bunny hop. Uh, 12, 13, or 14 maybe. Your body is better suspension than the suspension. Yes, you probably have suspension by now. However, your arms, shoulders, and legs are much better shock absorbers than they are. Also, changing your weight fore and after getting off of the saddle helps lighten the bike for speed bumps, curbs, debris, and potholes. And finally, 12, 13, or 14, or 15, your saddle is too low. Finally, you're driving me crazy. Your seat's too damn low. Your leg should be almost fully extended when your pedal is at the bottom of the stroke. You with just a little bit of knee bend. Your sheet is way too low 
and this puts you in a position where you're just pedaling a bicycle and not actually piloting it. In the city you need to pilot your bike. You need to have complete control of it even when it is one of those ponderous city bike share bikes. Good luck and please keep the rubber down. I am proud and happy to have so many of you all around me on the city streets. Every day my DC is feeling more and more like my Berlin did. Amen. Thank you and I'll be right back with uh, how to contact me. Hey y'all, I hope you really like that. If you have any questions, you can tell it's really dated. Like I said, it's originally written on, it's originally written on, uh, August 1st, 2013 at 11.06 a.m. So, it's wicked old. If you want to contact me, oh, currently I'm riding a Surly Steamroller single speed with a three speed uh, hub shifter uh, gear, gearing. And I'm about to, right after this call, I think I'm gonna take my bike to the bike shop and have bull bars uh, installed to replace my, my, uh, my drop bars. And I'm gonna put garish uh, orange tape on there. And, uh, I've been walking all summer, but I think I'm going to start riding this uh, fall, late late summer, autumn, fall, and winter. Thanks. Love you guys. Uh, all right. How to contact me right after the break. Hey there, this is uh, Chris Abraham, The Chris Abraham Show, formerly called Chris Cast, Season 4, Episode 7. Uh, you can reach me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can text me, you can trumpet me, you can signal me, you can WhatsApp me, you can text me, you can call me. Uh, call me! But I won't answer. If you want to schedule a call, uh, Calendly.com slash Chris Abraham slash 15. I'm at uh, Twitter.com slash Chris Abraham, Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham, uh, Chris dash Abraham for uh, Tumblr, Chris Abraham.com for my website, G E R R dot I S for my company. Um, what else? Uh, YouTube.com slash Chris Abraham. Yamama.com slash Chris Abraham. Um, that might be it. I don't know. Anyway, love you. Uh, hasta luego. Hasta mañana. Ciao. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüssi. Uh, tschüss. Uh, ciao. And ciao. And uh, duma. And hasta mañana. And I know technically I didn't record one yesterday, but when I say every day, I mean maybe, sort of, could be, and hopefully not six months between or eight months between, um, or was more like nine months between the first episode of Chris Cast and the last episode of, sorry, the first episode of the Chris Abraham Show and the last episode of Chris Cast. So. I'll do my very best. Let me know if it sounds better with the dead cat on it. And if you want to see what the dead cat looks like on my uh, Olympus WS853 recorder, uh, just go to Instagram.com slash Chris Abraham and it should be there at the top. Or go to Chris-Abraham.com and it should be on the top there. Love you guys, mahalo, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Ciao.
Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.